want to talk today about the future data ecosystems where individuals and businesses share data with each other to feed complex AI algorithms. In these ecosystems, privacy is relatively straightforward to protect, but AI will not always make the right decisions for people. AI might even end up manipulating people. Society in general is more and more aware of data protection and privacy standards, but the biggest challenge of future AI-driven data ecosystems is not preserving privacy, it is preserving freedom of choice. If you are passionate about AI, big data, machine learning as I am, you will have heard of the futuristic Netflix series called Black Mirror. Black Mirror tries to portray how technology will manipulate our personal lives in the future. There are several Black Mirror episodes involving data and AI. There is one episode called The Entire History of You. In this episode, people have a device implanted in their brains that records everything they see and everything they hear, enabling people to play back any part of their lives. This technology gets sour when people start to be overly influenced by these memories and sometimes even controlled by them. In another episode called Nose Dive, each person rates each other. And these social ratings affect people's rights and opportunities. The chapter involves a woman who struggles to reach a higher social rating to boost her status and to be qualified to live in a lovely apartment. All Black Mirror episodes are thought provoking and display both the sound and harmful effects that technology, for example, AI and data sharing brings to humankind. The theme of today's TEDx conference is beyond the stars. Well, sometimes technology pushes us beyond the stars, but the journey is full of risks and challenges and so many things could go wrong. I am running a data and AI company. My team and I create enterprise solutions for advertising, credit scoring, and consumer research based on data. Preserving people's data privacy while delivering value to our enterprise clients is paramount for me. But at the same time, what is really most important for me is to prevent my AI-driven uh, products from influencing people in ways that would not be in people's best interest. This means preventing AI from manipulating people and preserving people's freedom of choice. Companies, as you know, collect data directly from their customers. And at the same time, they acquire or buy data from other sources, either other companies or, or individuals. That means they share data. Sharing data to feed AI systems is becoming increasingly important to companies. And therefore, data exchanges, such as uh, data marketplaces, are proliferating, resulting in what is already known as the data economy. The data economy is a global digital ecosystem in which people or businesses share data with each other and get compensated economically for it. But not only that, in the data economy, data is gathered, organized, discovered, priced in real time, and exchanged by a network of players, either businesses or people. These players derive value from the data through complex AI applications, such as, for example, the ones my company is working on, advertising, credit scoring, or customer research. And there are many other AI-driven applications, insurance, self-driving cars, or many of the situations described in the Black Mirror episodes I was referring to before. But this is not just the future. It's already happening. For example, individuals already share, already voluntarily share their data with retailers through loyalty programs to get loyalty points and discounts. That is precisely the objective of a loyalty program, gathering data. Additionally, these retailers or e-commerce companies share detailed product demand data, sometimes even in real time, with their manufacturers or supply chain partners in order to obtain lower costs. So sharing data is very common. I was saying before at the beginning of my talk that privacy is easy to protect in this kind of data sharing applications, uh, but freedom of choice of individual users is much more challenging to preserve. So let's start with privacy. How will the future data economy handle privacy and data protection? Well, it could seem that once you share data with one of these data sharing ecosystems, you completely lose control of it. It could seem that the data, once you share it, could be further shared with other people in a way that you can no longer control. 
the reality is that data sharing can indeed be controlled and privacy and data protection can absolutely be achieved in a data sharing ecosystem. How? Well, two emerging technologies are appearing in the landscape that will collectively guarantee privacy and data protection in the data economy. They are Web3 and privacy-preserving algorithms. Web3 is the evolution of the current web called Web2. Web2 is controlled by large platforms such as Facebook, or Google, Twitter, uh, or Amazon. Web3 relies, on the contrary, on distributed blockchains, which are distributed digital ledgers that record any transaction, including monetary transactions, agreements, or even data sharing transactions, which is what we are talking about today. The fact that this ledger is distributed means that there are many copies of it that are held in different places by many different parties or organizations. It implies that a single party alone or a small number of organizations cannot modify transactions on their own. They cannot delete them. They cannot fake new transactions in an unauthorized way. Since blockchains are distributed, they create immutable verified evidence that all parties can trust inside the data economy to exchange data and get economic benefit from it. Moreover, blockchains will also allow transacting parties to define the purpose of the shared data. What can the shared data be used for and prevent our data from being misused? Since all data transactions are recorded in the ledger, it is impossible to count and it is impossible to counterfeit this ledger. Well, that means that all unauthorized data sharing would be easily identified and prevented. Data will only be shared if users consent to it and only for the approved purposes these users have consented. Web3 enabled data exchanges, also called data marketplaces, will allow people and businesses to transact data directly, easily, and securely without intermediaries in an entirely verifiable and way and only for the purposes they agree to. In summary, Web3 enables data protection in the data economy. One exciting concept in Web3 is called data unions. Data unions are a framework to combine a user's data with data from other users and distribute a share of revenue back to them when someone pays to access the data. Even though individual data does not command a high value, it becomes valuable when many people's data is aggregated together uh, to generate insights that an enterprise would buy. For example, one user could voluntarily decide to download some of his Facebook history or Google history, eliminate parts of it that he does not want to share, aggregate it with other people's data, and get paid to share it with an advertising company, a bank, or, or a retailer. So Web3 will protect data from unauthorized use. But how can we enable privacy? That's a different thing, right? Privacy means not revealing information or not or revealing as little as possible to other parties. Well, this is the second technology I wanted to talk about today, privacy-preserving algorithms. One of those privacy-preserving algorithms is called zero-knowledge proof algorithms. Proving any statement by revealing information is very simple, but not showing the data itself and still proving the statement is the challenge. This sounds too abstract and complex to understand, right? But let me give you an example, and I'm sure you're gonna get it straight away. Imagine you apply for a loan, and the bank asks you for many documents. The bank wants to use an AI system to verify that you can afford the loan. But in the documents, there is so much more private information that the AI system does absolutely not need to know to make this decision. Like for example, credit card transactions or statements that show what you do in your free time or where you go for dinner on weekends. And technically speaking, the bank does not need to know, even does not need to know the exact income details as long as you can prove to that AI system that you can afford the loan. How could you confirm that you have sufficient income to get a loan without disclosing your actual income details or wealth to the bank? With zero knowledge proof algorithms, a bank could accurately decide to grant a loan to a customer without the customer revealing any detailed financial records, but still proving to have the required income to afford the loan. This is what zero knowledge proof algorithms do. They categorically prove something, providing no details about it to the other party. It is mathematically very complex, but 
this is something fascinating to me. It opens so many possibilities for the data economy. But there are even more advanced privacy preserving algorithms. For example, an algorithm called triple blind, three times blind, allows multiple parties to reach a data-driven decision collectively using information from all parties. Still, the algorithm guarantees that none of the parties needs to reveal any data to each other. Again, what does it even mean? It isn't easy to understand without an example. So here is my example. In developing markets, as you know, many people do not have bank accounts, but everybody has a mobile. So when an unbanked client asks for a loan, the bank does not have a history of the client, but the telco has. Using the triple blind algorithm, AI systems at the bank and at the telco can accurately evaluate the client together without the telco disclosing any information about the client to the bank and without the bank revealing any information about the client to the telco. It sounds magical, right? Uh, what is the trick? Well, there is, there is actually no trick. It's just advanced cryptography and data decomposition. In summary, data protection and privacy will be achievable in AI ecosystems. Web3 protects data from by, protects data by tracking all data sharing transactions and disabling unauthorized uses. And privacy preserving algorithms make it possible for parties to collaborate without actually revealing any data at all or as little data as possible. The problem with the data economy is not privacy, since, as I was saying, Newer algorithms enable it and current regulations mandate it. The real issue is whether the AI systems that feed on the data will make decisions align with people's best interests and let them have freedom of choice. Let me give you a real example. Millions of people already share health information with, from smartwatches or wearable devices with insurance companies in order to get a reduction in their insurance premium. That's already happening. Also, millions of people already share a live video camera feed of their car front view to get a discount on their car insurance premium. Well, insurance company could introduce a new product, an app that recommends uh, products or habits to customers to keep these customers healthier or safer. These habits could include food uh, and exercise, given your medical history, or, or, or your objectives, right? But ultimately, these recommendations are intended to maximize profit for the insurance company. So people could over rely on these food or exercise recommendations, but I think most of us would agree that that is not intrusive so far. The problem comes when these nudges, these recommendations involve other very private and personal decisions that do profoundly influence a person's future and therefore his health and life expectancy. These decisions could go as far as whom to be friends with or what jobs to take. For example, the recommendation engine of the insurance company could potentially identify that meeting a particular person would not be positive for the insured based on historical statistical data of millions of people. That person could be a potential friend, boyfriend or girlfriend, or even an employer. The AI, could have identified that that person would be a bad influence for you, given certain character traits or economic level or the level of studies or insurance risk profile, or even unintendedly based on some kind of unfair discrimination. It is true that marrying or meeting somebody of particular traits versus other traits could really determine somebody's future and therefore their insurance premium. But influencing people in this kind of personal decisions through a profit maximizing AI is highly questionable from an ethics point of view. Uh, just imagine the situation. You rely on a particular recommendation engine that gives you good recommendations about food, exercise, social events, etc. You start depending on these recommendations because they work fine for you. At the same time, this very same algorithm could be giving recommendations to someone else that could be a future friend, husband or wife, or a business partner. But somehow, the algorithm has determined that you two should never meet because statistically speaking, that relationship is likely not to be positive in the long term for you or for the insurance company. Or even if you have already chosen to meet or date somebody, the algorithm could actively push you away from that person through subtle indirect recommendations from its app that you might not even notice. 
In the same way, the algorithm could secretly steer you towards making a critical decision in a direction you don't want, like deciding what your next job should be. For example, AI could push you towards accepting a job offer that will likely make you more prosperous and therefore a better customer for the insurance company. But in fact, you may really want to take another job because you value other aspects of it. Even worse, AI could deliberately stop you from getting the job offer you want without you even noticing it. We could argue that marketing and advertising have always nudged people in the interest of businesses. The problem is that uh, the data economy and AI can take this exponentially to the next level. It may be okay to be nudged in the right direction by a well-minded person or even an AI algorithm, but are you still thinking independently beyond a particular line on the sand? Are you making your own decisions or are others doing that for you? How much is too much? AI ethics standards are required to handle these dilemmas. In 2019, the European Union published its ethics guidelines for trustworthy AI, which include four principles. One, respect for human autonomy, two, prevention of harm, three, fairness, and four, explainabilities. These principles are sound, but contrary to data privacy standards, there is no proper framework to drive them in the corporate or public policy walls, and no appropriate technologies to implement them. I was talking before about two technologies that can be used to protect privacy. Well, there are no technologies to protect freedom. Most importantly, there is not yet a clear understanding about how this situation should be managed. Eliminating the risk of manipulation by AI systems requires globally accepted AI ethics principles that we are just starting to understand. But preserving freedom, freedom of choice uh, when working with AI systems is not only something that corporations, technologists, and regulators alone should think about. It is something that all of us should think about on our own. We should remain in charge of our own decisions and understand why we are making one decision or another without letting ourselves be excessively influenced by other people, the media, social media, and now also AI systems as well. We need to remain critical and keep thinking on our own. And we need to teach our future generations to keep thinking on their own as well. So to finalize, the theme of this TEDx conference, as I was saying before, is beyond the stars, right? Well, artificial intelligence will not take us beyond the stars unless we start to understand the importance of keeping our own freedom of choice when working with AI systems.